Did you guys just hear what the UN just did? I don't know why this isn't all over my For You page. The UN just basically took away America's sovereign immunity, okay? What that means is when there's another global shutdown or pandemic or health crisis going on, they can come in and make you do whatever they deem feasible for the particular situation. Meaning if it's shots that they want everybody to take, it's mandatory. You can't say, oh, I don't want to. Oh, I'm exempt. I'm excluded from this. You can't file for, for exemption when this with this right here. You know what I'm saying? They can go past that. You can see, you can get jail time and all types of shit going on with you. If they choose to do that, if you don't want to comply and go along with whatever they got going on when a pandemic, health crisis or whatever hits, that's scary. Imagine having someone sick in your house and people, military, armed forces or whatever, just come busting through your door. Take that person out and take all of y'all out and say that all y'all got to get shots because they said so or else it's whatever they want to do with you. That's how crazy it's going to get now that they didn't took this away. And I don't understand how this wasn't national news, news on everybody's television screen. Because if it was, we would have been able to stand up and make a roar about it. You know what I'm saying? Make it more of an issue. But they damn near did this right under the rug. It was only a select few people that knew about it. And the people that knew about it didn't even have big enough pages to get the message across. This is wild, man. But like I said, I want to know if y'all knew about this. I want to know if y'all knew about this. And I want to know how y'all feel about this. Because to me, this is alarming and a bit scary, to be honest with you. When you think about the actual possibilities of what can actually go down especially after seeing the pandemic. Ooh, it's going to be wild out here, but I'm done. I want to hear from y'all. What are your thoughts and feelings? Did y'all know about this? Did you not know about this? How do you feel about it now that you do know about it? Let me know everything. Drop it in the comments. Those greedy companies are making billions of dollars and they don't want to share. That's why we're out here now fighting for a contract. We're going to fight for it and we're going to win it. Or this portal will never open up again. From here to Houston. I'm not playing games here. what you guys do and they don't want the economy to shut down but they don't fully understand the job of the men and women who work that's here. the problem nobody knew what the longshoremen were we didn't get respected but now we will Colby, now we will when they find out malls are going to shut down because goods can't come in yeah. car right. salesmen are going to get laid off but well, guess what everything that comes in this country comes from the containers off these right. ships that my men work and i want the world to know it they learned during don't, don't come after us saying we're greedy Go after those greedy that own these companies in Europe. Go after them. They're sitting over there taking four billion dollar bonuses for themselves at Christmas time. That's gotta stop. A black child who was recently placed with white guardians was found dangling from a tree on that family's property. Most family sources have alerted me that the media and the police are sweeping this under the rug and that they will not be silenced and they would like us to help them shine light on the dark truth of this story. Let's take a look. More tonight about a death investigation in Hattiesburg after a body was found near Tim's Elementary earlier today. We're told an 18-year-old male was found dead near the intersection of Jamestown Road and Hillendale Drive on Tuesday morning. We do know that he was a former student of PCS, according to the school's director of communications. Hattiesburg police also say foul play is not suspected and that there was not a threat to the surrounding community. Forest County Coroner at Lisa Clem tells us an autopsy has been scheduled for Wednesday morning at the state crime lab in Biloxi. Now, is it just me or is that story missing a lot of facts? Although they say there was no foul play involved, sources close to the family have said and confirmed that that child was found hanging from a tree with a rope, which I find very, very important information to share, um, especially if this child was recently placed into a white household while after years of his birth family trying to get custody. Meet Jacoby Lindsay, an 18-year-old who was voluntarily placed in a guardianship placement by his biological mother 11 years ago. Jacoby and his three siblings were voluntarily placed in Homes of Hope, a nonprofit organization based out of Lamar County in 2011. So this is what I found on their website. Uh, it says, Homes of Hope, giving hope to the children in crisis. Serving children in crisis throughout Mississippi, Homes of Hope for Children aspires to be the first placement for disadvantaged boys and girls in need of safe, stable homes throughout the state of Mississippi. Your support brings us one step closer to helping kids reclaim their childhoods and helping them succeed. It says our mission of Homes of Hope for Children is to serve children in crisis throughout Mississippi by providing strong Christian homes to every child who lives on campus while ensuring that each child is loved unconditionally and has their physical, spiritual, and emotional needs met. 
Now, my sources close to the birth family has let me know that the biological grandparents have been fighting for Jacoby and his three siblings since they were placed in this Homes of Hope 11 years ago. And this place has made it very difficult. And we all wonder why. On their website, it says each Christ-centered home on our campus aims to provide an environment where success story can take place and where children can develop into confident, contributing adults. Currently, Homes of Hope for Children has four cottages, two for boys, two for girls. Each cottage house has up to seven children and is staffed by a Christian house parent couple that have been called to do this special work. According to sources close to the biological family, the grandparents have been trying to get placement of their grandchildren for 11 years. And the director of Homes of Hope has been actively blocking them with the help of not only his organization, but judges in Mississippi. Homes of Hope has even gone as far as requesting that the biological family do not contact them directly and contact them only through their attorney. Pause to read. That was after emails like this was sent by the biological grandparents inquiring if they can see their grandchildren or even if they can send them gifts. Pause the read. As you can see, the biological family has been consistent on their wants to at least see their children. And at every point, they were denied access, they were denied visitation, and now one of their grandchildren is dead. Now, I find this all crazy because Homes of Hope on their Facebook says that Homes for Hope embrace grandparents. Raising grandchildren can be a challenge for many reasons, financially, physically, or otherwise. And we receive children to our care, have a strong connection uh, with their grandparents. We want nothing more than to see that bond maintained and strengthened. Well, is that strengthening when the grandparents are trying to commit? The grandparents wanted the child in the first place. They wanted visitations and they wanted to send them gifts. And you guys have been stopping them for 11 years. And now they're, one of their grandchildren is dead. And just like everything else in external child care, I always follow the money. Homes for Hope has $5 million in assets. And their 2023 revenue was $1.5 million. Now, they get their money based on grants that are given by the state and federal government. And that is based on how many children are in their home. So are you picking up what I'm putting down? They don't want these kids to go home. They want to keep them for as long as possible, even if there are grandparents and extended families that can take them home. Why, you ask? This number right here. If you think this was bad, it gets even worse, unfortunately. Michael Garrett, one of the main people that has kept Jacoby from his biological family, was arrested for procuring institution and has other drug charges. Yes, that's right. The founder and executive director of Homes for Hope, for children. You know, sometimes they say if there's smoke, there's fire. Girl, there's a whole fucking volcano here. It says the founder and the head of Homes of Hope, a Pine Belt Children's Home, was terminated by the institution's board of directors Friday night. And the board member who was once the athletic director at the University of Southern Mississippi was named interim uh, executive director. Y'all remember that, right? That's Latisa Weller, the in interim program group director. The one that said, hey, Grandparents, we were, we would like if you would refrain communications with us uh, while we do whatever we want with your grandchildren, allegedly. Now, I know you're asking yourself five minutes in, Carlos, how do we get from there to a dead child? We're getting there. Now, allegedly, before Michael was terminated, he fired the house parents of Jacoby for inappropriate behavior, touching, etc., etc. They're called the Browns. We'll talk about them in a minute. Now, after his arrest and they got a new director, somehow, even though the Browns were no longer working for the organization, they were able, they were able, they were able to place an emergency order in the court for the guardianship of Jacoby. They were able to get an emergency order from the courts, even though they were fired allegedly for improper contact with a minor. Also, the director who fired them were, was arrested for prostitution and two drug charges. Who's doing the thinking? Who is doing the approving here? This petition was found in 2022. They didn't get custody of this child because the birth family fought for two years. They didn't get custody of that child until this September. As you can see, all the way back in March, the biological family is saying, hey, it doesn't make sense that they're trying to place our, ch our grandchildren with these random white folks that we don't know when they already have grandparents. Why, why, why would they immediately give the Browns guardianship if they have grandparents that love them, that want them? I'm not going to say nothing. Unfortunately, they were successful at terminating the parental rights for Jacoby's mother, making them the full guardians of Jacoby in September. Jacoby was placed under guardianship in their home around September 7th, and about a week later, he was dead. According to family sources, he was hanging from a tree with a rope wrapped around his neck with a hoodie on top of the rope. How did he put on a hoodie 
on top of the rope. The family is asking for us to be loud. The family is asking for us to hold not only Homes of Hope accountable, but also the local police in Purvis, Mississippi. Also asking any other children who stayed at the Homes of Hope over the years, if you were a victim, to please reach out to them and share your story because they are not being silenced. They have retained a family attorney and they will not let their grandson die in the way that he was unalived without justice. If you would like to learn more about this case and support the birth family, please check out their Facebook page that they've made for Jacoby, Justice for Jacoby Lindsay. There's tons of information there. There's tons of receipts. Um, we just need to help this family get their voice heard. We need answers and we need to shine the light on the dark truths of external childcare. Another young life was snuffed out because the system would rather value money than family connections. Rest in peace and rest in power to Jacoby and deep condolences to his entire family. Always shine your light. Stop right here. Stop right here, y'all. Do not go into these people's store and buy a bottle of toilet paper. Y'all, if these union workers go on strike, toilet paper will be at the least of our worries. Let's talk about it, y'all. The strike that's going on with these union workers. Um, they want to raise, y'all. We all deserve a raise with everything going up. These people want to raise. They're set to go on strike October 1st if they can't come to some type of mutual agreement about getting them a raise, y'all. What this means for us, it will impact our gas prices first. Because if we can't get no gas over here, it's going to become high demand. So guess what? They're going to make us pay more for it. It's going to affect our food. It's going to affect um, toiletries, fruit, all this uh, stuff that comes over that border, y'all. It's going to affect all of these things for us so we all need to be praying right now at this current moment that they able to come to some type of mutual agreement because we can't afford for gas to go up any higher we can't afford for food to go up any higher we all are struggling right now in this economy imagine it going up even higher furthermore if it takes them longer to come to an agreement like months go by y'all that means fuel we won't have no more fuel so how are our truck drivers going to come to be able to deliver you know our food and other products to these grocery stores if the truck drivers can't get gas then y'all know we during show ain't gonna be able to get no gas so that means we all stuck at the house you know can't move around we can't get no food we can't get nothing so let's just pray against all of that for the united states y'all and that we able to come to some type of mutual agreement so these people don't even go on the strike so we can continue to get our goods at a I ain't going to say a, a decent price, but a price that price that we can actually be able to get something to eat, y'all. Be able to travel, to go to work, and everything else, y'all. So, prayers. You know, prayers that everything goes good. And we have it to Tuesday, which is October 1st, for them to um come to some type of agreement. Furthermore, let me say this. If I can come on here and bring y'all entertainment talking about Cardi B and P. Diddy and all that, I can also give y'all the real of what's going on in the world, too. So, that's it. Bye, y'all. I just posted a video talking about Walmart and its connection with Diddy. Now, I just, entertainment purposes only. There are reports from the workers saying that they can hear children screaming inside of these, in these shipping containers. But isn't it ironic that Kendrick Lamar had these shipping containers inside of his music video? Ain't that, ain't, ain't, ain't that suspicious? This was in his music video. They ain't like us. This is showing that it, this is bigger than what has anybody has ever expected. Anybody. We talk about different times, not only in baseball back when you were playing in your early days, but, uh, you know, also socially. Uh, one of your few friends early on with the Reds, who was a teammate, was Hall of Famer Frank Robinson. And... At some point, Red's management called you into the front office and expressed concerns over well, no, your it was, it associations was Frank, with it was Frank Robinson and Veda Pinson. I was just a kid, and uh, you know, most of the white fellows on the team didn't think I was going to make the team, and I did make the team. And uh, I don't want to say they resented me, but it was a real clickish type team. And uh, you know, the Reds went to the World Series in '61 in 1962. Don Blasting game was the second baseman, and he hit 281, which is a pretty good year for a second baseman. So because of that, 63, they come back to spring training, they think they got a chance to win, and Fred Hutchinson, the manager, takes this young, brash, young second baseman by the name of Pete Rose and sticks him in the lineup. 
and Frank and Veda and, and, and Jesse Gonder and people like that, the, the, the African Americans on the team, uh, associated with me and they were they were friendly to me and they, they tried to help me become a better player and what better player can teach you how to play baseball than Frank Robinson and Veda Pinson was a great player too and and uh, the Reds called me in the office and said I was hanging with the African American players too much and I, I didn't care I didn't care what color you was what was your reaction to that I, you know I'm from Cincinnati I said I don't I don't care who, who cares I said uh, you know uh, Eddie Casco don't want to go out with me. John Edwards don't want to go out with me. Uh, Gordy Coleman don't want to go out with me. Uh, Gene Freeze don't want to go out with me. They're nice guys, but uh, uh, they'd rather go out with a blasting game. But Frank Robinson will take me out to eat. Or Veda Penson will take me out to eat. And uh, that's why I hung around with them. Puerto Ricans was part of hip hop from the beginning. And people like Busta would tell you we was there in the South Bronx. This shit get bad, this shit get rough. You pay what, it came back what? Nah, something ain't nothing enough. So Yale, Princeton, and Duke have been threatened with a lawsuit over the decline in Asian American enrollment since the removal of affirmative action. If you're new here, this page is dedicated to the shared experiences of Black college students and grads from HBCUs to PWI. The numbers that the team is pressed about. Duke went from having 35% of Asian American students enrolled to 29%. Yale went from having 30% of students enrolled to 24%. Princeton went from having 26% of Asian American students enrolled to 23.8%. What do you think the Black enrollment is at each of these schools? Black enrollment has remained just about the same. And so when we are talking about a decrease in Asian American student enrollment, how is it that Black student enrollment is taking away like the math is not mathing. They don't have a problem with the fact that 40% of students are enrolled at colleges that accept legacy admissions. Legacy admissions based on the history of this country who are predominantly white. They don't have a problem with legacies benefiting from a system. So instead of looking at the legacy admissions at these universities, they're honing in on a small percentage of black students who are enrolled at these universities and saying the black students are taking our spots, as opposed to looking at where a majority of the admissions are coming from. I'll never forget, because I went to the University of Georgia, predominantly white institution. I remember being in a class and having the dreaded conversation about affirmative action with my peers and them saying like, you know, hey, I don't think this is right because you're taking the spot of a friend who was more qualified than you to be at this institution. Okay, so you think I took your friend's spot, but we just got our test scores back yesterday. I got 100 on that test. What did y'all get? I saw some of the papers come back with 50s and 60s, etc., but I don't deserve to be here. Maybe you took your friend's spot. How about that? Because you're flunking, you're frying bacon in the back of a classroom, you're getting the answers to tests from your fraternity or sorority and I'm sitting here studying because I don't have access to that level of privilege. And what I want people to be honest with themselves about is not everyone is pulling themselves up from their bootstraps. Let's get rid of that American meritocracy theory of you work hard and you get X outcome. Because some of you are not working hard, but you think your outcomes are because you've worked hard. And when people don't have those same outcomes, it's not because they're not working as hard as you. It's because they don't have that same level of privilege, proximity, or luck and chance. So all I want to say is black students at PWIs, you have earned your spot. You're going to graduate and you're going to do great things. Don't let people say that you don't deserve to be there. I'm Liz, the creator of Poe Up, a party game celebrating black college students and grads. Stay tuned for more content celebrating black collegiate life and check out this question from Poe Up Card Game to try at your next game night. You mean to tell me black British people have ever fixed their mouths to talk about race relations in America when they have to annually run away from white people who want to jump them because they lost a football game? Off with your heads! Back by the boat, please. Back by the boat. Come on, come on, come on. Look what you are doing to yourself, man. Look what you want. Yeah. Uh, and I would like to clarify that uh, I don't have my baby. Um, 
my baby is taken away from me by the Dutch government and I'm still fighting uh, to get my baby back and I um, I would like to ask for help yes financial help um, for the lawyer to help to pay the lawyer and um, and yes I'm in war we are in war we are in all of this together and uh, once again I would like to thank everybody for all the love and support thank you very much so rumor has it crumble cookie doesn't repost many of the black content creators that support them let's take a look at their repost and see if this is true all right so off the bat it's very this very this them cookies look good though but it's very this i'm still scrolling i've yet to see one of me i've yet to see one of me not yet not yet oh it's questionable he might be he might be mixed it's questionable okay let's keep scrolling let's keep scrolling let's keep scrolling crumble oh found one this was back in may okay where else where else another one this was back in april okay okay but it's very still this oh look at those three little girls they're cute it's they're funny. cute crumble, crumble i think that you need to get a little better with the diversity here it's a lot of black content creators that support you get with it have the people that say white people have no culture ever been to an sec football game is this what you mean We've been using the term African American for the last three centuries. Many of our ancestors referred to themselves as Africans and those that were using the term African American basically because we were Africans in America. 300 years ago, you have proof of people calling themselves African American. Crying emoji. I'll wait for that source. Okay. A sermon on the capture of Lord Cornwallis by an African American. And this is what I love when Pan-Africans say, we, 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 and they forget about other demographics of people. So when we see African, how do we always apply that to someone being so-called black? And ma'am, this is how I know you didn't even read your own source. It reads, the sermon gives few clues about the identity of the preacher. But I conclude that it was written by someone who was black. Had some ties to South Carolina, but by his own admission did not have the benefits of a liberal education. Beyond that, I had no clue as to his background or what kind of person he was. Okay, and all of that, I didn't see anything about him being a so-called Slav. I didn't see anything about him being in the Atlantic, anything. So I'm trying to figure out how you're connecting this person to so-called Black Americans. So one, this lady is insinuating that all so-called African American people are so-called black that i guess that there's nobody that's so-called white that's african-american wow using a source that's using their own conclusion to saying that someone is so-called black besides this being a terrible source neither this lady or anybody in her comments took time to actually read the sermon the sermon is actually about this guy, Charles Cornwallis, and his surrender at the siege of Yorktown in 1781. Okay, so according to this lady, this is how we were writing 
in the late 1700s. Oh, Cornwallis, how art thy fallen? Thou who was the pride of Britain, filled with southern hero and parliamentary god, compelled to surrender the imperious standards to the combined arms of America and the House of Bourbon. I don't know nobody from South Carolina that talks like that, ma'am. Y'all playing Tally too much on this app. And y'all just pick anything that y'all see on Google. Ma'am, you Googled that. You really did. And it's really sad because people get on this app and they say, we, we, we. And then all of y'all start crying because y'all feel so emotional. But y'all need to start applying these things to yourselves. This is one of my ancestors labeled a free man of color, not a free African or anything like that. So what I'm saying is when you say we, I'm like, who is we? This lady never showed 300 years of us calling ourselves African Americans. She showed Europeans having a novel where they called somebody an African American. And while y'all playing, I can go even farther back to 1807 list of mulattoes and free Negroes. I don't see any evidence of anybody referring to anyone in my family as being an African American. Some of you young black people, based on a video that I made telling you about the economic situation, America essentially becoming like China, you're asking me what to do. And I hear a lot of statements and I'm concluded, I conclude that a lot of people, you know, you still just don't get it. Even though you guys like the video, some things you don't understand because you don't read history. And what do I mean by reading history? Not reading a particular book, but open your eyes. Whatever has happened in the past, specifically with a group of people who succeeded at something, they're going to continue to do the same thing. Okay? So this is what's going to happen. I told some of you, and many of you vehemently disagreed. And I understand from, from some perspectives why. Right? I made the statement that in two years, America's going to pay reparations to black people. They're going to pay you, but they're going to pay you to stay. Don't stay. Do the same thing I told you that the wealthy are doing with these ranches and selling their land. And even though they're going to do business in the United States, they're going to live other places. Okay? The United States is not going to be the same. It's not going to be for you. So here's the thing to young black people. This is what's going to happen. If you recognize that it is a scheme, a marketing scheme of the European or Western philosophy or, you know, majority people, you know what I'm talking about, to market to who they're trying to control, right? If you look now, most of the commercials you see on television, why are they overwhelmingly Hispanic? And not only, they're not even catering to the uh, Caucasian looking Hispanics, they're catering to the Hispanic Hispanics, Mexicans, okay? Why? Because they need them, okay? Why are they putting more Asian type movies out? Same thing. So this is going to go down when all this stuff goes down. And again, like I said, China's only going to be in charge of things for three years. When Africa really starts booming, what do you think is going to happen? The same thing they always do. They subsidize blacks. But it's going to be a different type of subsidy. Because those brothers are getting stronger over there because of us. They're getting stronger over there. So they're going to be in more control. They're already negotiating their land, their assets, all in like, well, fuck it. If y'all going to try to kill us, try to kill us. Now, some of you will say, well, no, America's done this. So you understand the recent passes of what you've been told have been successes of America. But here's what's happening. You got China and you have Russia. Russia and China are becoming two of the top friends of Africa. All right. Now, China's doing things a little different, and I'll tell you why. 
Some of you would say, well, China is doing this and they're doing the same thing. No, they're not. No, they're not. But you have to realize China is a lot. China is essentially part of Europe. Okay? So they're doing the same thing. They think they're trying to do the same thing or similar to, but they can't. The same thing that America's done. Okay? But they can't. Right? And they won't. And Russia and China have bigger militaries than the United States. So you're saying, again, I understand if, well, they'll go to work, go to war with Africa, France and all the people go to war. We'll have a world war. How? How? These people aren't crazy. Essentially, France will do the same thing the UK's done. They'll go to BRICS as well. You got to realize everything surrounding that area is BRICS. So they're going to support Africa. Why? Because it's a, it's a, it's a, basically it's a position that nobody in that part of that world has ever been in. Nobody has to be scared of going to war because they got Russia and China. Now, even though those are bigger militarily, they're like, man, we tired all this fighting. Y'all always thought it was us fighting. It wasn't us fighting. It was them fighting. So, you know, he said, little Israel. Israel essentially is about to go away. Most of you don't realize because you think those are Yeshua's people. All they are are Europeans over there in that area that took it over. I don't care how strong you say their military are. They can't outlast superpowers. Nobody wants to fight but the United States and Israel. And France is putting up a little battle, but they don't have... Listen to this, guys. Do you know why those people went to war in the first place? The places that they lived didn't have assets enough that they could even produce anything that would be purchasable by the world. So that's why they started conquering people. And then they put this religious philosophy on it to make it seem like, okay, this is God doing this. This ain't us. Put your hand behind your hand, back. So now everybody's eyes open. They're like, man. So when you hear places like uh, 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 Norway and all these places, look, man, get out of here, Blinken. Get out of here with all that war. We're going to come in your country. No, you're not. Places like Australia are about to kick the United States out. Because all Australia is is a uh, European colony. These people aren't crazy. Why am I going to try to fight my neighbor, China and all these people, for the United States, when they literally don't have everything. Everything is over here. So again, let me go back to black people. Do you know how, because I was one of those people, on the job, when it's beneficial to your company, they use the black person. Hey, let's, let's do this, let's do that. And it's not not normal. It's been a practice that's used forever, used for everybody, Hispanics, etc., well, they're going to do the same thing with us or y'all. That's why they're going to pay reparations. They're going to pay reparations. They're going to do all kinds. Of, you're going to see more exec, black executives rising to the top. Watch. In three years, it's going to blow y'all mind. Don't be fooled. See, y'all always fooled. They, they start promoting a few. Nah, promote them all. You got to think about it. You, I, I don't think you guys realize... <laughs> How many material assets come out of Africa that you don't even know about and they're not giving credit for? Even the steel that India is making, where do you think it come from? They're making it, but where does it come? Where does the ore come from? The same thing with China. There's nothing in China. All of the oil is in Russia and Africa. Saudi Arabia is running out of oil. I'm giving you guys all of the, the, the nuggets you need to understand what's about to happen. It's so hard for, I understand, man, listen. It is so hard to see black on top. And see, some of y'all like, well, you know, how black, you really think they're not going to stand up for their black brothers? Come on, man. Come on. And there's not enough Africans over here for them to just partner with them. So Why do you think they're already trying to strategically align themselves with Africans over here? Y'all don't see that? Just get ready. Y'all about to be on top. Y'all scared. Look, and remember all of, remember Obama? 
Remember Tyler Perry? Remember all the Negroes that were stingy when this happened. And don't let politicians walk in front of you. Position yourself. Politicians are going to do the same thing no matter what they do. Make their own money and fuck you. You don't need politicians. All you need is a skill and value. Man, they're going to have welding jobs that are paying crazy money. They have all kind of stuff. So what do they do? Let's say you got a weld in the United States. Because here's another thing that's going to happen. America's going to boom. But they're going to boom off other people's money. So this is what it's going to do. What's going to happen? Just like, and some of you don't understand this. Why is it that no matter where you go in the world, a white guy's over the project or over the company? You can go, look, do you guys know Dow and all these other companies have been in China forever? Have been in all. So Africa's going to do the same thing. They're going to come over here and say, okay, let, let's put my brother in, in, in. Okay. How long have you been an engineer, brother? I've been an engineer 30 years. Well, yeah, let's, let's promote him. Why? Because we want people that look like us running it. Now, some of you are going to find flaws in what I say no matter what. But you the one that's going to be looking crazy when everything happens. It is not a prejudice perspective, and it's definitely not a religious perspective. It is literally just a natural process of things that God has in place. The interruption was the interruption of a group of people who lied. Now that lie is being dismantled, stop holding it on. The only reason racism stands is because black people hold on to it. Let all that shit go, religion, everything. 